Hello, I'm Mark Walton, this is Jane Douglas. We're here in Los Angeles and it is that most wonderful time of the year. That's right, it is the Electronic Entertainment Expo and we're here with all the hot new hardware, the much anticipated and just announced new games and a whole bunch of publisher mega booths. In this week's E3 special, we run down all the latest news from the show. Guy goes and visits DICE in Sweden to post some questions to the developers of Battlefield. And Jane gets the skinny on Assassin's Creed Revelations, single and multiplayer variants. That's right. And then we've got your comments, naturally, and a competition in which we will do our best to get rid of all the promotional tat. That it's is not to tat. say, glorious promotional swag that we pick up as we roll around the E3 show floor, like tat collecting katamaris. All right, and, uh, but first of all, what are we gonna do? We're gonna jump inside, check out some of the hot booths on display. So let's do it. Let's go. So hey, you guys, here we are in the West Hall, one of the two mega halls that make up the E3 2011 uh, LA Convention Center uh, Fandango, I guess. So this is where the magic happens. This is the GameSpot booth. Um, let's just head inside. We'll wander through. This area here is the, uh, the editorial area. You can see everyone working away at their desk. So let's wander through and we'll show you uh, where the magic happens. You can just see Mark over there. He's working real hard, so he can't be with us right now. But uh, come this way, I'll show you where, where the video guys work. All right, mind your step. So this is where Serb's been working. That's his workspace down there. And we're gonna head out through the live stage now. All right, moving on. There's the makeup area. We do need our makeup. And here we are, this is the live stage. You can see Sean up there prepping for something. Uh, yeah, so this is our GameSpot live stage. Let's get out of the GameSpot booth. We are right next door to our friendly neighbors Nintendo and their colossal white Nintendo Temple of Awesome. Let's head down this way and we can take a peek inside, but we can't actually go right in there now because uh, this is the queue. You can kind of see the queue. People are sort of excited to, to try this new Nintendo console. I don't know, maybe you've heard about that. Okay, so as we pass by, you can uh, take a peek on the right and see what they've got going on over in there. That is the Hall of Nintendo. All right, there's a 3DS. I can't, you can't kind of see the, the Wii U from here, but, but rest assured it, it is in there. Oh, hey, hi, guy. All right, and uh, on the other side is uh, our other neighbor. This is the Capcom booth, which is all... This area is behind closed doors. But they've got um, they've got Dragon's Dogma, they've got Dead Rising 2, they have um, that's Dead Rising 2 off the record, of course, Resident Evil Raccoon City, and all the good stuff like that. There's another big old queue to get uh, behind closed doors for those presentations. Uh, but you can see there's a Raccoon City demo right here, and and if we move around these glamorous recycling bins there is the capcom main screen hot right okay and if sebastian would like to turn around we've got the uh, playstation mega booth right here so yeah nintendo and playstation right next door this year and yeah the playstation booth looking shiny as ever oh hey look playstation home how is that here? Okay, um, this is where we've got a bunch of the PSN games, but you can kind of see through there and, and just like how much stuff PlayStation's got going on. You can kind of see the NGP, oh, I'm sorry, the PS Vita up in the background there on the big screen. Uh, we'll take a closer look at that in a second. And moving on. Oh, hey, it's the Razer guys, but more importantly, here is the Bethesda booth right next door to Sony. Now this is kind of all walled in with these magnificent Skyrim walls, but uh, if you take a look up, you'll see our, uh, our friendly Skyrim dragon. So that's pretty cool. 
and uh, and back that way there's just more Sony it's just Sony forever so that's uh, some of the highlights of the West Hall now let's head over into the second hall the South Hall and we'll give you the news from the show Okay, so how about the biggest news of E3 as we see it? Nintendo. Right. All Nintendo. the way. Easily the most interesting of the press conferences, I think, over the weekend. And, okay. uh, well, weekday even. But uh, yeah, so Wii U. Right. So Wii U is the new console from Nintendo. Uh, Project Cafe was real after all. Yes, it was. And uh, it's, a, it's a whole crazy controller thing. Right, it has a new controller. But first yeah. of all, let's let's do the name because that's where they started, <laughs> and it is just a name. But it is also Wii U. How do you feel about that? Um, I, you know, I genuinely laughed out loud. I was in the GameSpot booth, and a couple of us just really started laughing. Um, it was could have been worse. It could have been worse. It could have been like Wii Stream or something, was which rumor. was kicked around, which is just the great. Plausible rumor. Which you know is very close to Golden Shower, and you know it could have gone horribly wrong right. at that point. Glad you went there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I had to go there. But um, yeah. I I think it's interesting. It's a bit like Wii University or just, I don't know, Wii U. It's a bit what like... What was the meta explanation? It's because it's about us. It's about so us it's we, now. me and you. Yeah, it's us, about you personally. You. It's about your personal sure. gaming rather than the gaming of you and your family. Whatever, Nintendo. Which is Wii. I, right. I don't know. I, okay. so it got too meta for All me right. at that hardware. point. Hardware. Yes. Hardware. That's your thing. Hardware. I like hardware. Okay, so it is, it's a whole new console. Yeah. Although in the presentation, they... Um, they put all the emphasis on the new controller to the point where they didn't actually show us the box. That was one of the of interesting the things about the uh, about the uh, presentation. You're right. So the actual box was kind of hidden away, and all the focus was on the controller so to the point where a lot of people were uh, confused about exactly what this was. Is this a peripheral for the Wii? Which the name kind of implies as well, Wii right? U, Wii right. U. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not. It's a separate box. It does 1080p graphics. Uh, surround sound, all that gubbins that the Xbox and PS3 have been doing for a while. Um, but the focus is really the controller and right. the way it can now stream your games to the controller and stream video uh, um, inputs from the controller's amazing, well, we say amazing, uh, 6.2 inch touchscreen, I think 6 it is. 6.2 inch touchscreen. Yeah. So let's talk about the controller, which is a tablet. It's a touchscreen tablet, but with buttons. Now, I remember you saying something, something that you would do if the Project Cafe controller turned out to be a tablet with buttons. Well, at the time on the GameSpot UK podcast, I thought I was correct in thinking that this can't possibly be a tablet type thing How with right buttons. You were. And I said I would eat my own face. All right. Now, in lieu of actually eating my own face because I would die. And we're going to um, need you for E3 yeah, at least and, you until know, the end of the show. They're going to need me to write something at some point. Um, I've, what I've got here is a photo of my face. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is eat this. Now, I'm only doing this because I incessantly got tweeted after the Nintendo press conference to eat my own face. And we didn't have time to put this on a cake um, or anything. And to be fair, this is more painful for me. So I'm actually going to eat this. And while I do this, Jane is probably going to run down some more specs. I'm going to tell you about the uh, Nintendo. Uh, Wii U controller while Mark digests. So it's a 6.2 inch tablet, touchscreen with a front facing camera. It's got four shoulder buttons. It's got two sticks. It's got a D-pad, it's got four face buttons. So you're getting the idea that it's positively bristling with buttons. There are a number of buttons on the controller. How's that taste, Mark? Mmm, tasty. All right, next up, we've got the big news from the Sony conference, which was uh, the NGP. Another name this by time? By its proper name. Uh, another slightly dubious name. How do you feel about the so, PS Vita? So Vita, Vita, Vita. Vita. Actually, Whatever. my favourite was uh, Vitamax or Vitamax, okay. which, uh, which was quite Promising. good. Promising. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, we'll get used to it, I'm right. sure. It's not, okay. It doesn't have quite the same ring to it as NGP. I've got quite used to calling it that now. And but you'll get used to this? I'm sure I will get used to it. But what we did get was also the pricing and some kind of release window. Yeah, so the pricing was $249 and uh, €249. Euros. Okay. And uh, that was for the uh, Wi-Fi only. Uh, with 3G, it's 299 in either currency. So, right. not okay. bad. Yeah, they haven't priced themselves out of the market no. when it comes to, you know, the 3DS price. Say. Yeah, I think people were pleasantly surprised um, with the price. I think people were expecting it to be like 350 something like that for the Wi-Fi only model. So for it to be 250 yeah, it's pretty cool. And we were at the Sony conference and we played some of the games they had on show. I was playing the Uncharted Golden Abyss. 
Yes. Looks very good, and I know you played a number of. There were some. Well. There were some great games on the show floor uh, at, the so at the Sony event. You know, they had a load of Vita games. I played Bot Nation. They had Uncharted. Played Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which was fun. I played Pixel Junk's new game, which is looking fantastic. That's uh, Side Scroller, um, which is kind of a really old style arcade stuff. But we should go back to the press conference because they did um, announce one other kind of really crazy thing there. More hardware news. 3D TV. Right. A small one. 24 inch. Yes. Uh, $500 3D television for dorms, bedrooms, they say. Yeah. So it's a really entry level 3D TV, which we haven't really seen. Not yeah. at that size. You don't get 3D price. TVs at that size. So they're pricing it to get people on board with 3D without having to buy a massive 60 inch plasma. Um, yeah, it comes with um, a game, a shooty thing, uh, two sets of glasses, and you can play split screen on it as well. But it kind of, because of the way 3D works, you can actually both use the same screen and see the whole screen using the 3D glasses, yeah. which I yeah. think is fantastic. So it's like the opposite of split screen. Exactly. So you get whole screen, and so does your gaming yeah. partner. So cheap way to get on board with 3D. I think that's a good move from Sony. So good work, All Sony. All right. And uh, next up, we've got the big announcements such as they were from the Microsoft conference, yep. which was very Connect heavy, leaned perhaps, on Connect a great Perhaps deal. a little too much Connect for me. I mean, I think when I saw um, the, the Tom Clancy stuff, where he was kind of doing this Gunsmith. kind of... Yeah, yeah, it was like, it was a bit... That was okay, the Gunsmith bit, actually, because it was very minority report. He was like going whoosh, 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 whoosh. But um, when he was actually playing the game, it just looked hilarious. Like, you know, when he had to pull the gun right. out of his thing to reload, and then he was walking around like this and doing that kind of motion. And this. Yeah. It, yes. See, I look hilarious now doing it, but when he was doing it on stage, it was just... But, yeah. we, uh, in terms of uh, Connect in core titles, we also saw Mass Effect 3's voice command integration, yep. where you'll use voice commands to order your squad around, but also to uh, interact with them in the uh, dialogue trees. Because that's something I've always wanted to do in Mass Effect, is stand there and go, Yes, please. I do. No, I just no, no. It's not. Right. It's not good for me. Okay. I don't, I'm never going to do that. Do you play ever. Lady Shepherd or, or do Shepherd? I do play male Shepherd, oh, but uh. even 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 if I play, if I, could you imagine if you played Lady Shepherd, you had to do it in a female voice. I don't think you will have to. do I'd be it like, in a yes, Krogan. Yeah, not good. Not good. That's how I don't it'll think be. it's good. Okay. All right. Uh, what else did we have? We had Connect Labs. Yeah, Connect Labs is an interesting idea developers are able to get their own stuff onto Connect. So any like kind of a third party developers can, well, and universities and even people just messing around with Connect can submit uh, ideas to a Connect website and then people vote them on to uh, Connect um, to Labs and uh, people can play them, which yep. is cool. So that's Connect Fun Labs and that's already available. That was available as the conference went out. That's yep. pretty cool. Yep. And um, what else did we see? We saw the uh, Double Fine Sesame Street game, Once Upon a Monster. Yeah, yeah that, that was cool. Really sweet, right? Yeah, I think that was cool as well. And I'm just trying to look through my notes here, what else there was. Halo 4, we yep. got a tease Halo for. Halo 4 was really good. Tomb Raider looked amazing. You think? I thought it looked amazing. Very brutal. Uh, Lara was getting well, Bruce Lai, she had like shrapnel in the leg that she had to pull out. She screamed a lot. Right, very she did bloody, scream very a lot. gory. But it's a lot more realistic than the old team ready. Well, she was practically indestructible. And you, I mean, it was right. very unrealistic to pick. I mean, she was unrealistic in other ways. But uh, I think that, you know, this kind of new visceral thing they're going for, I hate the word visceral, right. but that's what they're using. Um, yeah, it's quite cool. Okay, we'll see you on that. Um, um, what else is there? Oh. Halo anniversary. So yep. it's Halo Combat uh, Evolved anniversary. Yep. For the 10th anniversary of the original Halo game, they're going to be delivering a HD remake. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, we didn't hear a great deal on Halo 4, but we did get... Get a teaser. We got a teaser. And also the surprise of the show, um, more or less, because we suspected the rest, was uh, Minecraft. Yeah, Minecraft with on Connect, the 360. Obviously with Kinect compatibility for the 360. Pretty excited about that one, actually. Yeah, I love too. Minecraft, so that's yeah. going to be cool. Okay. Um, rounding up the other stuff, Far Cry 3, which you saw. Yes, there was uh, an announcement at the Ubisoft conference for Far Cry 3, so that was brand new, and also Ubisoft had Brothers in Arms. Yeah, which Furious is Inglorious, Inglorious uh, Bastards, as the it were. Game. Yeah, the game, Correct. basically. With uh, Randy Pitchford working yeah. on that. Uh, Mario Kart 3DS as well, from Mario the Nintendo Kart stuff. Yeah. Luigi's Mansion 2, Star Fox, Mario 3D, uh, and something Bioshocky for NGP. That was at the Sony conference, yeah. We had Ken Levine on stage saying that there would be a Bioshock game for the Vita. Yeah. And that, that was literally it. And move support for Infinite. And move support. Because everyone was clamoring for that. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, coming back to the Nintendo stuff, that was the other big thing at the Nintendo conference was the second wave of 3DS games is really a lot stronger. The first party 3DS games a lot stronger than the first. Yeah. 
Well, I think overall Nintendo's press conference was the most impressive. I think they've had the biggest news this show. Um, 3DS is great. It's got me back on board with it. I think even the Pokedex stuff. Uh, so I guess you'd say Nintendo was your star conference of the show. Absolutely. I think Nintendo blew it away this year. It was amazing. Um, loads of cool stuff to see, and I can't wait to get my hands on the uh, the Wii U later right, on. Right, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, I'll try. I, I did. But hey, I'm hardcore. I can do it. OK, so right, that's the news coming out of E3. Remember how last week on Start Select, both Guy and Johnny were away, and you had to suffer the intolerable presenting skills of video monkey Seb Ford. Hi, Seb. Well, turns out they were in Sweden, seeing DICE and asking them about Battlefield 3. Here's how it went down. All right, time to Battlefield your questions to Patrick back now. Uh, Patrick, I've been through the uh, forum for Battlefield 3 on, uh, on GameSpot. And some lots of people having questions, so real quick, if you could answer some of them, that would be great. Um, first one is from GameSpot user Callister Coon. He says, is this, is this a safe place to hide from monthly fees? Uh, yes, Battlefield has always been about, you know, if you buy the game, you'll get the full game experience, so yes. Uh, does anyone know if Battlefield 3 will have battleships and subs like in Battlefield 1942? Uh, we will have ships of some kind, but I can't go into detail on exactly what that means. All right, something to look forward to for uh, GameSpot user BS Bala 09 there. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how worried are you about prone? Uh, one. Right. <laughs> so I'm not very You're, worried. But ten excited about <laughs> Prone. Uh, I'm very excited about it, but I'm not worried about it. Uh, we've seen, you know, playing with it, it's great fun. We add a lot of depth to the, to the Prone position, uh, and there will be a lot of fun. Well, that's an eight-page discussion about Prone on GameSpot, from, uh, started by user BTZZ. Um, Beam of Light asked, did they confirm the usage of bipods? I think you did today. Yes, absolutely. We will have bipods. You can deploy your gun. Uh, the, the light machine guns can be deployed and you get increased stability and you will be uh, able to more or less control the whole street with the suppression. One question that was um, started uh, was, the one thing I want from Battlefield 3 is, conquest mode on all maps from launch and then Ar Arkanoid adds I'm going to be seriously hacked off if we have to wait six months just to be able to play conquest on all launch maps is that can we talk about that at this stage you will have conquest on all maps by launch Jason L2 says um, anyone else think weapons should have a, re a reliability stat they're going to have reliability stats, they're going to wear, wear down over time. Uh, we actually been talking about the science like that. The problem is that it's really hard to get people to understand why their guns all of a sudden start to not work. Uh, so we will not have that for Battlefield 3 because it removes some of the fun factors of the game. Deja Vu 1982 says, uh, it's just video showing jet flight. I think he wants more elaboration on video, because this video has been released. Jet flight sections, can you talk about that at this stage? Uh, the only thing I can say is that we will have jets in the game, okay. for sure. And finally, Jordan Spark says, why does love always feel like a battlefield? <laughs> all the variation and all the fun. <laughs> Next up, we have got straight from E3, an interview with the makers of Assassin's Creed Revelations. In it, you'll be playing as Ezio and Desmond and Altair, because Desmond's fallen into a coma and he's plugged into the Animus, and Ezio is reliving the memories of Altair from Constantinople, and there's also Templars, and I don't know, just check it out. Hey, this is Jane Douglas for GameSpot here at E3 2011. We're here with Alex Amantio, Creative Director on Assassin's Creed Revelations. Uh, we're very pleased to be joined by Alex, and we've just had a very impressive demo. Um, first of all, Alex, tell us, um, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood kind of wrapped us up in a bit of a narrative uh, knot at the end. How are you going to resolve that? Where are you going to take us from there? Essentially, uh, uh, Revelations is the end of the Ezio trilogy. So everything from AC2 and ACB has been leading up to this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of set up um, all of the, the sort of the revelations that stem from 
Altair's role in AC1, all through AC2 and ACB, and uh, we're going to present a sort of a narrative uh, a nexus point, where the sort of the past and future of everything to this point is going to sort of fall into p into place, like uh, the pieces of the puzzle are sort of say going to fall into place, and you're really going to understand everything about like what everything that's led up to this and everything that's to come in the next chapters. So you're promising us everything will become clear? Yes, exactly. Okay, uh, and you're going to be playing as um, as Ezio for the most of it, but also as Desmond? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'll fire. And uh, what are the proportions? How's it going to work and how are you going to be moving between them? You did explain a little bit about how the animus would work. Yes. Um, essentially, uh, Desmond is stuck in uh, in the sort of uh, the black room of the animus, as we call it, sort of the low-level operating system. After Brotherhood, he falls into a coma, and uh, he's sort of put in the animus to keep him alive, like to sort of keep him from reaching like limbo. Uh, he falls through the sort of the white room operating system uh, and into the low-level DOS-like animus. Uh, this is a very abstract level where everything like sort of systemic uh, rooms meet uh, sort of his subconscious and he needs to find sort of the back doors into uh, the entry points to the memories of Ezio. It's through the completion of Ezio's memories and the reaching of that certain nexus point that uh, he will find his way out of the animus. So that's how uh, Desmond gets to play Ezio's memories. Now Altair is played through Ezio himself. Uh, when he finds these uh, sort of uh, first civilization artifacts to sort of allow him to live uh, Altair's sort of key moments. Now, I can't tell you exactly what the proportions are because obviously with an open world game it's very hard to sort of like set numbers like that, but uh, think of Desmond as sort of like the Desmond's chapters are sort of like these entry points into Ezio's main storyline and then that is segmented into sort of like uh, entryways into Altair's key moments. So Altair lived a very long life. He, I think, he died at ninety something. So you will get to play him from his uh, late teens or early twenties up until when he's ninety. So that gives us a lot of room to inter, sort of intercut with uh, all the key moments in his life. Okay, so you can be playing as Ezio, playing as Ez uh, playing as Desmond as Ezio, who is playing as Altair. Do you ever get like an Inception kind of feel going on here? Yeah, uh, a little bit. But that's all about Assassin's Creed, right? It's all about like uh, the animus and playing your ancestors' memory. So it was always the case. Okay, and um, uh, sorry, with with that. Um, with that plot, you see it as being the end of this trilogy, and the trilogy being Assassin's Creed 2, and then Brotherhood, and then Revelations. And that's the, that's the end for Etienne Altair, but how about Desmond? Desmond will carry on. So you see Assassin's Creed as being um, around Desmond? Yes, it, 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 traditionally it has always been, right? Uh, that, that sort of uh, Desmond is the present day link to all his ancestors. There is a uh, sort of a overarching present day narrative. Uh, it's all about the end of the world in 2012, which is fast approaching in real time. So obviously we need to conclude everything so that we are uh, uh, in real time when we reach the actual date. Okay, all right, so preparing for the end of the world then. Exactly. Okay, all right, let's move away from the uh, from the plot perhaps and um, to the new mechanics in the single player specifically. We saw this, um, we saw some of the action with the new hook blades and also with the zip line which it, which it keys into. Yes, uh, yeah, the, the hook blade is one of the systems that we're adding to the game. Uh, first of all, the hook blade uh, speeds up uh, navigation by about from 25 to 30 percent. Uh, not only does it speed navigation, but it actually adds flow. Also, um, Assassin's Creed is all about movement, right? You know, free running and, and running around the open world city. And we felt that uh, when you came into combat, it sort of like slowed the pace a little bit. So we added the one of the elements for the hook blade is that it adds fluidity and adds a bridge between movement and combat. So, for example, you can um, you know run towards an enemy, uh, perform a hook and uh, throw, which vaults you over the character, catapults him. Uh, on another NPC and allows you to start the fight right off the bat, like very boom, from movement to combat instantaneously. That's just one of the uh, the sort of the moves it adds. Okay, and we also saw um, some of the new uh, crafted bombs. Tell us about those. Uh, yeah, uh, we showed you a couple of samples of the crafted bombs uh, with the demo. Uh, obviously, the you know how economies and games are typically uh, around money. You know, you have very little at the beginning and you have too much at the end. We sort of uh, uh, shifted our economy. Uh, we still have money, but a little bit towards ingredients. The whole goal of this is to give the player the opportunity to run around the city, buy and find new ingredients 
combine him and create bombs that will help him sort of like manipulate the game towards uh, the type of gameplay that he likes. For example, he or she likes. Uh, for example, if a player is very stealth oriented, well then he can create bombs that will reinforce that. Like for example, the smoke bomb that we showed you in that demo. Or another setup, for example, uh, you know, I kill a guard, I drag him into a place where I know a patrol is going to come by, I set a tripwire bomb, and then just wait until the other guards spot that, come by as they examine the corpse, boom, the tripwire goes off. So we're really giving, uh, opening up a lot of gameplay possibilities, we're allowing for players that like to play aggressively to be able to reinforce with moms, you're allowing for players that like to play the stealth game. To, again, to reinforce it with uh, with uh, stealth-oriented bombs, it's really opening up the possibilities and allowing you to play the game the way you want to play it. And do you expect that to feel, uh, is that intended to feel different from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood? How familiar will combat, for example, say, feel in this game? Um, I think uh, th there is a change of pacing, for, uh, like, uh, for sure. Um, players that still like to play very aggressively will be able to find like uh, their, their way through it right but it's just i think it, it's it's more of an evolution right it allows you to really you know really transform the game into the sort of game that you want to play you know in combat for example one thing that we're adding to, to sort of like just revamp it you can remember in uh, ac brotherhood we did have secondary weapons during combat uh, but those weapons were activated through uh, you know like holding a button for two seconds for example which sort of goes a little bit against the whole uh, you know like uh, idea of combat that is very fast-paced what we did here is we added a, a second button for all of the uh, side weapons so this really um, opens up the possibilities during combat. You might be fighting with your sword or hook blade and then all of a sudden turn around and throw a quick bomb on a, an incoming character. It really allows for more fluidity and more uh, variety during combat. Okay, great. Well, um, just, just last now, let's talk about, you began the demo by saying you wanted the game to be more um, narratively meaningful. Um, does that mean we're going to get away from having so much stuff to do in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood where there were factions and buildings to uh, to upkeep and um, to, to, to buy and uh, renovate. Is that something that you're no longer interested in or will we see that? Uh, no, we definitely have that. And uh, the approach we've taken is that like, yes, Assassin's Creed is, is a huge game and it's becoming ever bigger. Uh, there's many systems. What we try to do here is while continuing to add new systems, we've tried consolidating them and uh, creating more links between these different uh, um, systems. In that way, we reinforce the sort of the core experience of the game. So we have something new that we haven't shown yet. It's called uh, the uh, sort of the Assassin's Dens. Uh, the Assassin's Dens uh, has sort of like two parts to it. First of all, it is some new gameplay elements, low level gameplay elements that you can do with your assassins in the city. Uh, there is also a tie-in to uh, sort of a, a more of a Mediterranean gameplay where you send your assassins on missions, like in Brotherhood, but an evolution to that. And then we also consolidate a lot of the existing systems from Brotherhood, for example, the Borgia Towers, uh, the, uh, the actual Brotherhood and the city improvement elements, and we merge them all, we tie them all into the, the core narrative experience. So although it's still as big or even a bit like more elaborate in terms of systems, they seem more connected, so the player can't sort of go around them, you know, it's part of the experience. All right, very cool. Well, thanks, Alex. We can't wait to see more. Uh, can you just give us the uh, platforms and uh, release window, please? Yes, uh, PS3, Xbox 60, and PC, and the game will be out November 15th. Great, thanks very much. Okay, now it is time for your feedback as per usual. Firstly, we've got an apology. A number of you have brought it to our attention that there has been an audio issue with the iPod version of the show. We are aware of it and have a crack team of our finest tech monkeys working on the problem even now. It'll, It'll be get sorted, sorted soon. don't worry. Okay, in other feedback, we've got Brad XD who said of last week's show, Seb made a great first impression in his first show. Thank you, Seb. Uh, I can't wait to see more of him. Great work, GSUK, so thanks. Yeah, well, Seb should be thanking him, frankly. Um, on MCM Expo, which we were at, Capillary Ear uh, posted, that line between cosplay and delusion is extremely thin. That Captain Jack Sparrow cosplayer looks completely insane. Good costume, though. I thought it was great. All right, and uh, then we've got Lustra89, who wrote in on body count and said, not going to not body count, but I don't know what sort of development stage it's at. Uh, but the AI looks like that found in Homefront. What AI stands still in open ground and runs in front of grenades? Uh, what AI indeed? What AI indeed. Okay. Competition time now, and you have the chance to win all of the tap that we pick up uh, from E3. And I yeah. say tap 
I we're mean, talking lanyards. I mean, valuable merchandise. Giant t-shirts, yep. badges. You, we may even give our badges away. Right, Mark's own badge. This very badge, which but, I have worn and has got my lovely sweatiness on it. You could win it. All right. yours. You're really so, selling that prize. I'm selling it. But there will be good stuff in there. There'll be loads of swag. And we'll pick up as much as we can for you. So all you have to do to win is answer this question. If you could call the Wii U by any, any other name, what would you call it? So, you know. Yeah. Go on better than Nintendo. Tell yeah. us what you would have called the Wii U. Wii U. It still the sounds Wii U. weird. Answers to competitions at gamespot.co.uk. Um, also, if you want to get in touch with us, there's uh, twitter.com slash gamespot.uk and check out the Facebook page for everything that's going on behind the scenes here at E3. That's facebook.com slash gamespot.uk. Also, you'll find all of our E3 coverage at uh, e3.gamespot.com. Take it away, Mark. Well, I think that's it for the show, isn't it? So happy gaming, spotters.